Any other gift? And hopefully YouTube wants to cooperate with us. That would be fantastic if it did. I am literally just barely starting a YouTube channel, so... Yeah, I was looking you know for you today on the YouTube. I was like, I wonder if he has a channel, because I saw you adding things to a playlist. Oh, does it do? Does it show or something? I yeah, don't... if you have your if you have a YouTube channel connected to your Twitter, it'll pop up on your Twitter. Like when you add things to a playlist, like when you do stuff on it, if you like a video, if you change a video, something like that, it'll it'll automatically pop up on your Twitter. Oh wow! So I was like, oh, I wonder what the hell's going on over there. Interesting. <laughs> But what is going on, yeah. guys? I am the one, the only, the W-O-O-K-I-E. As I told you guys, I had a very special guest, a guest that I didn't think would ever get back to me when I sent him the DM on Twitter. Uh, and just by the grace of whatever higher power you want to call it today, um, he got back to me. We set up a date, and here we are with Martin Casaus. Now, do you prefer Martin or Marty, I guess? I should ask that first. Should have probably asked uh, that off Whatever you feel. Yeah, they don't worry. It's whatever you feel. People call me Marty. People call me Martin. Whatever feels like coming out of your mouth at that time. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. Very good. You got anything you want to plug? Uh, since we got we got people coming in here real quick. Everybody's kind of filing in uh, all gingerly. So uh, you guys, do you have oh, a... Oh, uh, quick thing so dang gingerly, everybody. But uh, you got anything um, like, where can cool. I buy my Martin, my, my Marty the Moth gear? Where do I buy that? Well, you can go to my website at martincasals.com. That's where I have my hats, my, uh, my T-shirts, my wristbands. The T-shirt store takes you to pro wrestling tees because I love the, not having to have an inventory and send it myself because um, I'm never home. So go to martincasals.com, sign up there uh just subscribe there and uh, i will be sending them um some free stuff um i am actually doing some competition i'm just barely working on the site so it doesn't look fantastical yet but i am working on i'm not a web guru i make money by kicking people in the face so uh <laughs> love that that's fantastic i'm just logging into the site guys now i'll put a link to this uh once the video again goes live Real quick in the chat, I just want to say hello to everybody that's filing in. Crush Phase, Ben, Jared, Randy, AJ, Baller, WWE2, Matt, what's going on, guys? Gaming Barry, what is this? Re we English, pal, come the fuck on. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Ooh, we can swear. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Feel free to use whatever language you feel necessary. This is a. I, I call this the, uh, you know, you yeah, see some of those I'm podcasts out sometimes there. Sometimes it comes out of my mouth, sometimes it Right, they're very button-up, you know, all that jazz. Uh, they, they all, they're, you know, very professional. Not around here. No, every, we just put our <laughs> hair down and we, we tell it like it is. So I kind of felt, I, I didn't know where to start with this because I had some people going, Marty the Moth, who's that? No offense to you, but I'm like, uh, excuse me, you need to find Jesus because how dare you not watching Lucha Underground, which is probably the best, in my humble opinion, uh, I think it's honestly the best promotion that's going on on TV right now. So I, well, I my guess... My humble opinion, I agree 100% with oh, that. Oh, absolutely. Now, I kind of wanted to take this all the way back. I wanted to go to a young Martin. And w what was the idea? Where did you start out and go, you know what, I, I want to do... I want to kick people in the face for a living. That's what I want to do for the rest <laughs> of my life. Like, where did you make that decision? And, and maybe who influenced you to make that decision? Actually, I made that decision the second I was standing two feet from a wrestling ring. Okay. Um, I didn't get into professional wrestling until the Monday Night Wars were happening. I was a huge WCW fan. I refused to watch WWE which is hilarious because by that, during that time, Stone Cold Steve Austin was in his highlight. That was his big run during that time. Um, and then now with my relationship with him, then it, I find it hilarious. I didn't get to watch him at all. Um, but a little bit um, ironic, almost ironic. Exactly. And another ironic thing is the first match that I ever really remember uh, watching and remembering, okay, there's this guy and this guy was uh, a guy named Bill Goldberg because um, he was in Salt Lake City that day, 
and a guy named Bill DeMont. They called him Hugh Morris, um, I think, at that time. So um, I, I recognize that because I saw it on TV. I'm like, I didn't know these guys traveled and came to Salt Lake City, Utah. That's where I'm from. Right. Um, I, I just thought it was like in the old days where there's a group of 40 guys. It's very tight-knit. There's no, only they do it. There's no other way uh, to get into it. That's what I thought it was. I didn't know there was independent promotions around. I didn't know about TNA, ROH, New Japan, all this stuff that the internet has now given me the ability to go see. Right. That's um, fantastic. So I went to a WWE show. Somebody handed me a flyer at the local place here in Salt Lake City. Um, said, come to our show. I totally didn't. But I found that flyer three months later when I cleaned my room and uh, went to the training that night. And uh, I was in a show three weeks later. Um, I just had athletic ability, and they drained into me what a match should be. So uh, the second I saw that ring, though, that's what I knew. I would like to kick people in the face for a living. I just didn't know it was a possibility. Now I learned. Now, so, now you learn. Live and learn, right? Do you have any wrestlers that were big influences on you at the time? Obviously, you said Goldberg, Stone Cold during Goldberg. that time. Actually, I didn't watch Stone Cold until way later. That's crazy. I just refused to watch WWE until... I started watching a little bit more right about the time where WCW was about to fold. Okay. Uh, so I was huge on Bill Goldberg because I came from a football background. I was huge on Diamond Dallas Page because he was huge in WCW and Sting. But Diamond Dallas Page had these crazy gimmick matches with guys like Jay Leno, which my mom watched religiously every night. Um, and then all of a sudden DDP showing up on Jay Leno. So that got my attention. And then he had a wrestling match with Carl Malone. Carl Malone is a guy from the Utah Jazz, yep. NBA. So that made me like him. I'm not saying they were good matches, but they were. They caught my attention. Uh, but after I figured out what wrestling was, Shawn Michaels is the one that kind of pretty much molded my career after. Um, he just has so much fun. You could tell when Shawn Michaels wrestles, he just actually has legit fun in there. So, and that's something that I try to portray during my matches. I hear Shawn Michaels a lot when you talk to people. Everybody seems to try to emulate him. Now, I got to ask, and I was going to wait until the end for this one, but I have it written down in my notes in the little margins. When I was doing some research on you, you the person, you have, and I don't know what this is, but I have to ask, what is a Series 7 license? I have a Series 7 and a Series 63 financial license. Yes. So I actually work for a stock brokerage firm. Um, what those licenses do is legally, um, the NYSE is very, very regulated. The SEC um, regulates it. Um, it's a New York stock exchange. So I can um, legally trade stocks, trade individ uh, mutual funds, individual stocks, CDs, bonds, um, and I could do that in all 50 states. So uh, those are those two licenses made the list. actually mean is that I can work and trade in the financial industry. Okay, so that that's pretty much all that means is you're you're able to trade stocks. An average Joe like me probably can. Uh, I've dabbled in a little. You can go in, trading, but you'll but... use a broker. Exactly, you'll use a broker. I'm the one. You could call me, and I could go in and trade a stock for you. That if is... you call my broker. So, that's so. fantastic. So looking at this, okay, so we go from. You're learning. Who trained you, basically? Who trained you to do all do all the stuff you now do? Um, well, a lot of people trained me to get to where I'm at now. But when I very first stepped in the ring, that very first day, it was a guy named Steve Nelson, and then I have one of my best friends, Derek Hubbard. Um, guys from Utah, local, they showed me the ropes. And then, obviously, you can't learn by one place. So I started traveling. I started learning more, picking up stuff everywhere I go. Um, but I credit those two as the ones who showed me how to bump, how to run the ropes, how to hit, and just be in the ring. So those two are the only ones I gave credit for. Um, and then according to Wikipedia, that they somebody put Bill DeMont down as one of my trainers. So cool. I, I was going to ask you. I'm like, I saw Bill DeMont on Wikipedia. Is there any truth to that? Um, I, I, <laughs> I guess tough enough. WWE tough enough. He was a trainer there. So yeah. I guess there's kind of truth in that. But I wouldn't say he trained me. Okay. Uh, but hey, according to Wikipedia, at one time I was also um, the only—I uh, was an African American who won the WC title from Hulk Hogan. 
So one of my friends showed me that on Wikipedia <laughs> one time. You're kidding, right? You saw that? <laughs> no, I guess I, on Wikipedia at one time, I was a African-American who won the WCW title from Hulk Hogan. <laughs> So, uh, God bless the internet. Well, everybody in the chat knows I say, uh, you know, take everything you read on the internet with a grain of salt. Uh, everybody in the chat, yeah, I know, crazy, crazy thinking, right? Like anybody can do anything on on the internet. So, real quick in the chat, uh, Scott wants to know, do you? Okay, first of all, he wants to know what your thoughts are on the current WWE product. Um, I don't even know if I'd you have time to, to watch it. I I don't. I, I don't watch it honestly. Um, I just. I'm never home. Um, and when I am home, going to watch wrestling isn't the first thing on my mind. Um, right. But I do watch some some things. I do every once in a while catch a pay per view because a lot of the guys watch it at my house. Um. So the current product, I from what I've seen, um, I like what they're doing with Goldberg. Um, it kind of brings it back to the old school WCW days. And I do like that they're giving women an actual more than four minute matches now. Right. I have, so, I have often said but, on this channel, I made a video the day that sexy star won the title. And I said, you want to see the true women's revolution? It's right there. It's right in front of your uh, face. Mar just find your, just Mar find your LRA network. Did you see that sexy star versus Mariposa when they beat the crap out of each other and bled everywhere? Oh Yeah. Yeah, I Very did. I just, I, what was it? Uh, is this just yesterday? Actually, I'll be uh, we, uh, seasons one and two of Lucha Underground went on TV, or I shouldn't say TV. I'm sorry, it went on Netflix. So I actually, when I first found Lucha Underground, it was I met a I met a guy or I met a friend, my now friend and cohort in this whole thing, who was supposed to join me, but he didn't. Uh, he had to work tonight, but he wanted well, to come on and talk to you. Yeah, I know. So he said he had to pay the bills or something. I'm not sure what that's all about. But wow. uh, he said that um, he's the one who actually turned me on to Lucha Underground. I did not know anything of this Lucha Underground. I knew who you were, obviously, through your days at Tough Enough. But um, I didn't know anything about Lucha Underground. And funny enough, the first match I saw on Lucha Underground was your match with was it Kill Shot with the Weapons of Mass Destruction. Oh yeah, kill shot. Weapon yep. of mass destruction. That was the first Seven match I saw. Later. Yeah, it was the first match I saw, and I was hooked ever since. You get, you can ask the guys on this channel. We watch it every Wednesday when it's on. Obviously, we're in hiatus right now uh, with the mid-season break that you guys have. Did you guys film the rest of season three? Is that? Oh done? yeah, is that every, in the can all and of being season edited? Three is in the can and done. Like okay. uh, they're just not showing it right now for whatever reason. Um, they kind of kept their lips tight, um, but I am very excited because uh, the next 20 episodes, we have another 20 episodes yeah. in the can right now for Lucha Underground Season 3, and there's a whole, whole lot of the moth in them, so I'm excited for that. Um, we get to explore a little bit about me and Moses Santos and that story, so that one's going to be fun. We all know that so, story. <laughs> if you don't... Watch any one of my matches and you'll find out. Yeah, go go on Netflix. It's on Netflix, guys. I plan my birthdays tomorrow, so I'm gonna put my tootsies up and binge me some Lucha Underground tomorrow. So well, that's my a game. Birthday. Yeah, that's my game game plan for my birthday. So you know, hey, it is what it is. Just kind of perusing the chat here for some more questions before we move into your time at Ultra Championship Wrestling. Now I already got into that, but I'm looking. I was looking at here. And again, I found this on Wikipedia, so I have to ask. You had a match with Marty Jannetty? I, I did, yes. I had a match with Marty Jannetty. Um, I love that man. He is hilarious. I don't know if you ever met him, but he's hilarious. I've never met him, but I have a signed autograph of him in my room. And I was just, I was like, oh, I didn't know Marty Jannetty went to UCW. Because you're kind of like a thing of legend over there, almost. On their YouTube channel, like, you're featured on almost everything. Am I? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Very much so, yeah. If you go over to UCW's YouTube channel there, you are, like, on everything. Well, I think it's hilarious if you look up UCW and don't put UCW zero, it's like this uh, gay, like, where they hold each other kind of UCW, like, video channel, which is... I was just about to ask you about that. That was actually my next <laughs> question. 
Uh, what, okay, so explain more about UCW Zero to me as somebody who's like, I don't understand this. Uh, UCW Zero is an independent wrestling promotion in Salt Lake City. Um, we are, and uh, I'm very proud to say we're having our 15 year anniversary next month. Are you are you um, still uh, booking there? I'm not. I'm pretty much not doing anything except for coming into wrestling when I have time. Okay. If I don't. If I don't have a booking that weekend, um, then I will wrestle here because I'd like to just stay home and actually see my girlfriend. Um, and then, uh, but th- I did give them January, February, and then this March show here for the 15 year anniversary. I did make sure to book those three out because um, I got Ray Mysterio Jr. coming into Salt Lake City on March 4th, which is my birthday weekend. Oh, so I'm pretty well, excited about that. Happy early birthday. Really, really well, early, like, but, you know, hey. It yeah, is. Really, what is it? Jeez, that's actually closer than I thought. That's it's a couple like, weeks. Yeah, it? I was saying, it's not far away. Um, no, but in know. the chat real quick, Scott again wants to know, have you ever tried DDP yoga? You know what? I hope you all try DDP yoga because I freaking love that shit. Is it fantastic uh-huh. as everyone says it is? I need, I could stand if you lose a few um, mm-hmm. dozen pounds. I thought I was athletic, and then I tried DDP yoga, um, and I learned different. So, um, no, I, it's great because I, the WWE back in, after Tough Enough, Stone Cold Steve Austin, I asked him straight up. He had gave me a cell phone number, was nice enough to uh, keep in contact with me. Um, I, I asked him uh, anything that I could change or do better to be make something in this industry. And he said, honestly, you're 190 pounds. You've got great skills. You've got great looks. You've got charisma. Just try and get bigger. The WWE likes bigger guys. I'm like, all right, cool. So I hired a personal trainer. I started eating six times a day, put on 40 pounds. And then I realized that when you put on that much weight um, and you don't stretch, now I it's hard to reach certain areas of my body. Um, you just lose that flexibility that I want had when I was 190 pounds. Yeah, I find um, that with so age, he, I, too. I can't reach certain places I used to. Oh, man. I'm, now <laughs> I'm going to have a birthday here soon. That is not encouraging. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm I'm turning 30 uh, tomorrow, and I'm not looking oh, forward hey. to it. i got to stretch before I get into bed now, which is weird. <laughs> That's you know, smart, though. That way you don't wake up uh, sore. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I actually did deep yoga for... Um, I, I can I just haven't had a chance to actually sit down. I am leaving work right now. I'm sitting in the car when my girl does the groceries, um, to do this podcast from here. I got a business call from there, but basically I just don't have a lot of time to sit down and do anything. Um, so deep yoga, I only did for a couple weeks, but my flexibility increased incredible. Um, I did like my girlfriend did it with me and uh, she laughed at me cause I'm over here sweating bullets and sweating like crazy and I'm not doing anything where I don't really get to sweat as much as I think I do in the ring, but now I'm sweating and I'm stretching and she's over here just fine. She's hitting all these cool poses. I look like a jackass, but, uh, it works. So if you have a chance to do it, do DP yoga. I think I might have to pick it up myself. Now, speaking of tough enough, obviously that was season five, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Was it season five or season uh, six? I have no idea. All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna wing it and say it was season five. Uh, two thousand eleven was Stone Cold. How was that? I mean, Stone Cold for me, one of my you know back in the day when I started watching, it was uh, ninety eight, ninety nine. Stone Cold, top of his game. My favorite, probably wrestler of all time. What's it like working with a guy like him? Um, very difficult in the beginning because in the back of your mind, you got to think, all right, I'm here for to win this competition. So you have to take your freaking out. Oh my God, this is Stone Cold Steve Austin and set that in your pocket and then just be there for the competition. So the whole time in your head that's happening is don't think about, Hey, that Trish Stratus is looking at you while you're doing this. (laughs) Don't think about Booker T is looking at you. Don't think about Stone Cold is right there. Don't think about, Oh my God, Trish Stratus is really freaking hot still. Um, don't think about any of that stuff. Just worry about the competition. Um, because Trish Stratus is still freaking smoking right now, isn't she? Oh, absolutely. Hey. Yeah, she she, she hasn't, she hasn't aged in like the past 15 yeah. years. She still looks the same as she did when she was in the ring. 
And during Tough Enough, uh, they, would, they would have us do a, 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 like a bunch of push-ups, sit-ups, and squats before we ever got into the ring. Um, some could get through it easy, some couldn't. Um, and to make sure they made it hard, they'll have a sit halfway through the push-up, and then you'll have uh, uh, people go around and mess with you. Booker T will do mind games, and Trish Strass will just come and sit on you. Man, <laughs> I've never... I have never been so strong in my life in a push-up. <laughs> I would hold that all day with Trish Stratus sitting on you. And then it changed drastically when Bill DeMott cha- put, took her place. Um, completely different story when Bill DeMott sits on you versus Trish Stratus. So who, who yeah. was all there for your Tough Enough? I remember Booker. I remember Trish. I remember Stone Cold. I do remember Bill DeMont. Who else came in it, and, and, and talked to you guys or worked you guys over? Those four were the ones that were there the whole time. Okay. And then you had uh, guest people that came in. They had the big show come in, John Cena, uh, Johnny Mundo, which was John Lee Morrison back in the day. Uh, the Rock came in. Uh, um, i trying to remember. Oh, Is that uh, really intimidating, having The Rock come in? I got to say, out of everybody, I mean, The Rock at 2011 was just starting. I guess you can say his his real huge rise, even in movies. But is that is that kind of intimidating with The Rock coming in, or were any it, of them intimidating? All of them? None of them? Um, all all of them. I think I was more intimidated when I was Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon is the guy that, for some reason, like I Stone Cold. Yeah, he's intimidating. You got to give him his respect. But I was able to put things aside and say, all right, he's not so cold. Steve Austin, he's a guy named Steve. He's my coach. Awesome. Um, I was able to do that with Trish. I was able to do that with Bill and Booker. Um, but The Rock would be totally intimidating, except for if he wasn't so freaking nice. He's so outgoing and bubbly. And what you see on TV where he's goofing off and as you see on his Instagram, where he's goofing off and having a blast and like being friendly with everybody. That's how he is at all times that I've ever met him. Um, and it's funny because he meets a lot of people every day. I'm sure if somebody, anybody saw him across the street, they'd run over and say hi. Um, but we shot tough enough. And then we were at WrestleMania. I think it was 27. Um, they took us to the backstage. The rock was there and he remembered most of our, if not all of our names. Um, and it was a month later. Wow. So I thought that was impressive as hell because how many freaking people does he meet every single day? So um, The Rock would be intimidating if he wasn't so damn nice, <laughs> which I'm all for that. He's awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. That's fantastic. So run us through like a, what a common day on Tough Enough would have been for you. You would mentioned, you know, doing a bunch of sits, a bunch, uh, I'm sorry, a bunch of sit-ups, push-ups, squats. Where do we go from that point on? Well, the, actually, the hardest part for me, um, they like to screw you mentally. And I knew because after I found out I was on Tough Enough, I'd try to research the other Tough Enoughs. And uh, I knew there would be one day where they'd show up at some stupid hour in the morning. And uh, we all kind of knew that. So, but they didn't tell us, hey, wake up at this time or training is at this time. They didn't tell us any sort of times. So we had no clocks or anything. Um, you had no so, clocks? No, not, not that I that not that I remember. They they had us on a schedule that was their schedule, and we didn't know. I don't think I don't remember any clocks being in the building, but it didn't really matter because they didn't tell us, "Hey, tomorrow's training at 10. They didn't tell us anything. You just went to sleep and hope you woke up. And so you had a bunch of us chilling around the kitchen because that's where they would come and say, "Okay, guys, let's go." But they wouldn't like yell to people upstairs hey time to go you were either at the kitchen and would go or you missed it and you'd show up late and then you get your ass raped so like did you have clocks in the house so that was i don't remember one honestly there might have been one in the kitchen but That's i don't crazy. remember one. so so and, was it uh, like a reasonable time though i'm just thinking like man if, if i had the opportunity you know I'm, I'm getting my ass handed to me Man, I might like sleep, you know. I'm a I'm an early bloomer. I wake up at like six or seven every day. But like let's say I sleep till eight and they come at seven thirty, like you're just now in trouble. Yeah, because they want to make good TV. So if you show up late, then they can yell at you and then people could be like, Oh, look at that dumbass being late. <laughs> and they had no idea that 
hey, they don't tell us at all when to show up. Okay, be downstairs at 10. We can do that. But they played those mind games with you where they didn't tell you when to be downstairs. And I think that's what screwed with me the most because I love sleep. Right. When I get a chance to sleep, I'm, oh, yeah, I make love to that bed. Um, <laughs> but uh, they wouldn't tell you, so I just started waking up earlier and earlier. And so they had a whole roster of people just hanging out around the kitchen because they didn't want to be that guy that's late. Yeah, and get so your that, ass kicked and then look like a moron on TV. Exactly. So that was the part that was harder for me for tough enough. Um, but after that, we'd walk down to the uh, right about to the outside of the building. We'd make sure all the cameras were set and we would just kind of stand there and be like, all right, we're about to get our butts kicked. Um, we'd go in there. We'd start with uh, sit ups, push ups, and squats, jumping jacks. Um, anything else they'd come to us, they'd love to like get to like 85 push ups. And then like we'd stop halfway. Um, and then we chill there until Bill DeMott or Booker T got tired. Um, and they weren't doing them, by the way. So they got tired of watching us do it. <laughs> um, and then from there, uh, we went into the actual training. So we did a bunch of stuff before we actually ever got in the ring. Um, so you're already tired. Now, now you're actually getting in the ring. Exactly. So is that to make and good that- TV, too? Do you think, or is this just part of the old school hazing that you hear about? No, absolutely. How do, I'd like um, push, push up sets and squats. Most wrestlers don't do a lot of those. They'll they'll go to the gym and they'll bench press other squat or or something like that. They'll squat with weights and stuff, but they'll do it. Okay, I'm gonna do a f- set of eight, uh, four sets of eight, or something like that. There's not many times where you'll see a lot of wrestlers saying, "Okay, I'm gonna pound out a hundred of these right now." Um, and be fine. So it's just you're not used to it. Your body's not used to doing 100 push-ups, sit-ups, and squats right there. Um, and then whatever they wanted us to do before we got into the ring. So some people were ready for it, and some people weren't. So that's where you had stuff like Eric, who got tired a lot, and um, he just he wasn't used to doing push-ups. He's 265 pounds. Right. So, um, but they wanted to destroy you to make – they wanted to make you quit. So they wanted you pouring down sweat before you ever got into the ring. And then uh, they could basically find ways to make you look like shit on TV. And, and, then, so. and then poke fun at you. Because I, I'm not going to lie. I'm watching this at home thinking like, man, how can't you get up on time, man? You set an alarm, you wake up, and you go. Not knowing that there's no clocks in this house. Or not knowing, like, you know, I, I, I was an athlete in, in my high school days. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good. Uh, never went any further than that. But, like... You're thinking like, man, I could do that. That's no problem. Not knowing that you had to do 200 squats before you ever see the ring. Yeah, that's, right. Exactly. That's absolutely insane, and that's something that like us as just viewers at home watching this have we're so unprivy to. That's crazy. And then so though we get the chance to as a fan be watching it, like what exactly? Why are you late? You're good old train with Steve Austin. What you just slept in? You do not want this, right? And yeah, no clue. And honestly, that's what screwed with me more than any of the push-ups, sit-ups, the squats, more than any of the wrestling, because we didn't do any advanced wrestling on Tough Enough. It was all simple shit. Um, but uh, it was the mind games. Of the and, however, there is one cool thing about Tough Enough that I hope, I wish I could just keep with me the rest of my life. Um, they wanted good TV. So after you train, then you go back to the mansion. You get to hang out, but you can't leave the mansion. You can't. There's no cell phones. They take away your phone, so you have no communication with the outside world. You're not allowed to listen to the radio. You're not allowed to listen to t- or watch TV because you have no communication. Um, so you're sitting around and you get bored. But they make sure that the alcohol is 100% stacked and all <laughs> and accessible at all times, just so that people could get drunk. Get stupid and have uh, make great TV. So, make great TV. I, I remember one time in particular, um, I was talking with I don't know, it was like Rima or Luke or somebody. I was talking with somebody, and uh, I was saying, "Man, I love a Jack and Coke right now." And then uh, I'd see somebody like run off, and then all of a sudden, a Jack and Coke would be a place like on the thing next to me. And I was like, "All right, that's freaking awesome!" So I took full advantage of that. Where if I could just think it and say it out loud, all of a sudden things would pop over to me. It's great. <laughs> I wish I could keep that. That's yeah. what I wish I could keep. That doesn't happen at home, does it? 
No, I'm trying, but my girl just <laughs> Working on it. They have that R2-D2 uh, remote control fridge now that you can just kind of roll over to you. You can, you can just keep it Ooh, stocked. I not that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's available. It's only $8,000, but it's, it's out there. And then my girlfriend was telling me there's some traveling kit that, like, shows, like, it'll roll around with you and uh, say the travel times and stuff like that. I think technology's getting way too crazy. But there's going to be a lot of fat people here soon. Oh, well, I think there already is. We are the most obese country in the world, aren't we? Something like that. Yeah. So, let's move into Lucha Underground. I don't want to take up too much of your time here today. But uh, moving into Lucha Underground, like I said, season one and season two are, are have not watched yet. But hey, guess what? what? Come, come tomorrow, I will have watched probably them all um, because that's just kind of <laughs> how these things go. But uh, like I said, season three started off with you versus uh, Killshot and the Weapons of Mass Destruction. And what is just an ins- I think that was actually episode three, if I'm not mistaken. But that's where I came in. But- oh absolutely crazy match you guys had you guys are beating each other with explain to me i if i remember correctly and i'm doing this all off of memory there was like legit shells like what looked like just giant military shells at ringside what were those those were legit shells they were just just legit military shells hanging out yeah well, the the missiles the missiles were fake but just the shells were real the like um, the grenades were propped. They were still hard as hell. The, uh, everything there, like guns and everything, they were all hard. Um, like what, and, uh, what percentage would you say was real on, on stage? Or uh, on set, I guess. Real as far as um, hard and made out of the material, about 90% of it. Uh, by I real, I guess it. I would say like that machine gun. I can't remember who got hit with it, but obviously there's a 50 millimeter machine gun there. Somebody got hit with it. Is that a real was, gun, like out of service was, gun? Uh, yeah, there was there was uh, one gun that was a little bit softer, and then one gun that was uh, one hundred percent legit. So the one gun I came in holding, I mean, you drop it, you could hear the clank, 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 clank. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a legit gun. So that was the real one. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. So, and then uh, we try to protect ourselves, but the missiles were obviously fake. We don't want to bump on a missile and blow up the entire un- arena. Right. That would um, be a bad idea. Bad idea. They did cut out my missile spot. I did uh, do some impro- inappropriate stuff with the missile. So they, um, they actually, and I didn't know this now that you're saying this, they actually, they'll chop up the matches too. Yeah, they try and fit it for TV. For for that one, it was funny because they just like I asked them what time they're going to. Like you're doing, just keep going, bro. You just do keep doing what you're doing. I'm like all right, cool. Um, but yeah, they'll try and get the best angles, and if stuff's too long in this particular match, they'll try and see if they can cut it out or try and cut down some of the selling or something like that, just to make sure it fits. Um, but yeah, Lucha Underground's uh, a beast. It's kind of a, almost like wrestling in SmackDown, um, where uh, if they want to get a particular spot on TV and they said, oh, that was super cool, but we didn't get it very good, so we'll have the, re- the whisper to the referee say, hey, do it again. And so we'd go in and we'd have to try and redo the thing and make, let the crowd do it in a way the crowd didn't notice the exact same thing. So uh-huh. so those, like, I guess run me through, I-, I guess I've always been curious to this, how does a Lucha Underground shoot? Do you guys shoot, like, is it like a three-week deal, like like a TNA does, where... You know, in a three-week time, you guys are all on. I don't. Is, what, where is it? I know where the temple is, but like, what is it? I guess is the bigger question. Is that like a sound stage? It, it is actually the exact same warehouse that they shot the original Saw X. Okay, so, so it's at like a giant warehouse. Giant warehouse, yeah. So if you ever go and watch the original saw i just think in those showers johnny mundo and marty the moth are just chilling showering in those showers oh wow so, uh, but Hand, yeah handcuffed or something maybe and, uh, well that's no, obviously not me i'm the one doing the handcuff <laughs> um we, we know that but well some of us know that. <laughs> but at least like, give me a chick in the same place if we were said johnny mundo right um <laughs> he isn't a he is a handsome man but that he is enough. that he is but um so so, like, is it, like, you guys just run episode after episode after episode, like, maybe for, like, 10 hours, Monday through Friday, and then you just continue that for, like, three weeks? 
or is it kind of like more spread out? How does that work? Like, all right, we're going to have all of Marty's matches right now, and then we move on to all of somebody else's matches. Did we lose him? I think we might have lost him. Are you still there? Oh, no. Let's try to get Marty back here real quick. We seem to have lost him. Matthew, how's it going? Abraham, how we doing? Killian, can't watch it in Ireland. I'm sorry, bro. All right. Do we have you back? Yeah, I'm oh. not sure what happened. I don't either. It, it's you know, the internet, you know, technology. When it works great, it's fantastic. When it doesn't, it um, can drive your life insane. And it doesn't usually work. Oh, you're going to hear my dog's crying. I'm nah, that's all happy. right. We've had worse. My, my viewers have heard my kids crying, so it's not really that. I mean, same thing, really. <laughs> so I don't know how much of that last question you heard, but, like, how is Lucha Underground, I guess, filmed? You know, like, do we film it like each episode is a different show, and then, like, we filter out a new crowd and filter in a new one, and then we do show two, and we just do those until whatever time for X amount of dates? Or how does that exactly work? Kind of exactly what you said, so... Um, a day on New China Down would be we'd get to the air, we'd leave, meet in the airport. I'm sorry, the hotel um, lobby at nine. We'd go, we'd have breakfast. About two hours later, they come out saying, Hey, you're going to wrestle this guy today. I'd say, Cool. Um, and then for the shows, we'll do probably either two or three a day. Okay. And the show film on Saturday and Sunday. So um, we'll shoot an hour. What's that? We'll shoot an hour's worth of, of TV, so we'll the one episode, and uh, uh, then we'll have a break. The fans will get to go out, get reshuffled, and then they get come back in, and then we'll shoot another one of an hour, and then if we're doing a third, we'll do the exact same process again. Okay. So same fans, just all mix around. Um, so you're shuffling so those same fans around to kind of keep it keep it fresh. Keep it fresh, yeah. Um, but also those fans worked really hard to get those tickets. So we didn't want to kick them out and have people yeah. trying to get the next show, et cetera. So trust you me. Yeah. They're not easy tickets to get. I've been, I've been poking around to find them and they are not easy to find. <laughs> so I'm like, man, how do I get to go there? And then, you know, it's Tell like, me man, when you're going. tickets are tough to grab. So yeah, I gotta, I gotta convince my wife first. She doesn't know we're going on a vacation here shortly. She will. <laughs> Surprise. Just get on this plane, honey. Uh, You'll never know. <laughs> so, all right. So explain. So how does like the storyline work? Like, is there a creative crew that works there? And then they come to you and say, hey, Martin, here's what we want you to do. Or like, is it a, is it a very mutual conversation? Um, It's an actual, they have three different writers. Um, and uh, if they're most of them, actually, I think all three of them have worked for the WWE before. Um, so they come from wrestling backgrounds. Um, so it's uh, Roach, Stolman, and to Joseph. Um, they come to you and be like, okay, we're. They don't tell us, they didn't tell me storylines. Um, some people go and ask. I just, all right, cool, I'll just do what you tell me to because that's why I'm here to get paid. Right, you just do um, it on the fly? Yeah, pretty much. Um, but they'll come and tell you, like, okay, you're wrestling this guy. Um, we want it to be this. All right, cool. And they don't tell you why or anything like that. Um, but when you're doing, I guess the, the one thing I'm trying, I'm trying to get at it here, and I'm not doing a very good job, so I apologize. I'm trying to get at the, um, obviously, season one, I believe, you kidnap Sexy Star. Um, yep. And then, but season two, you start this really awkward, I don't even know what to call it, uh, relationship, shall we say, with Melissa <laughs> Santos. Um, <laughs> where you're just totally, you know, I, I dare I say perverted with her. Um, not to that degree, but you know, kind of the, the creepiness is there with you and Melissa Santos. Like where does the, who, does somebody come to you with that idea or are you like, Hey, I, I got, I just, this just popped in my head. What if I was just as creepy? <laughs> um, no, actually they said that that was actually created to be from rehearsals. That was me goofing off with her in the very beginning of before my first match on TV against Prince Puma. Um, during rehearsals, I was whispering something in, uh, or something in her ear or giving her some sort of shit. I like to goof off. And 
Krista Joseph was down there and said, Hey, why don't you do that? I'm like do what? Um, and we were standing in the ring for rehearsals and he said, why don't you just get a little bit cool, like uncomfortably closer at all like, times. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, well, why don't you flap your arms like a moth? That'd be hilarious. I'm like, like this, like, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> you should do that. I'm like, all right, you'll do it. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. I don't care. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. So we tried it that one time. Then it turned out to me being super creepy with her and the fans. The very first time reacted so well. And it just got so much, so better <laughs> every single time that I did it. That they're like, screw it, let's just keep it. It's working. The yeah, it's it's hilarious. It's absolutely and hilarious. I got... I've received death threats on Twitter. Really, it. I think it's. I mean, you us as wrestling fans, we know it's um, scripted. You know what I mean? And I was just curious. I the, the whole point of that was I was wondering how scripted it was. Is it WWE scripted? Or is it, you know, kind of that give and take where things can happen on the fly and you can just run with it? And obviously that sounds like what's going on there is it just just happened and we ran with it and it was great. Exactly. We ran with it. It wasn't something that was in the plan. All they really told me right off the beginning before that match was you're Marty the Moth, you're part of the Moth tribe. You're not all there up in the head kind of, uh, you're kind of like a big kid. Um, just not all there. I'm like, okay, cool. Where'd you get that? We based it off of you. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm not sure how to take that. So, right. <laughs> and then I'm over here kidnapping people. So I don't know if they think I'm a kidnapper, um, a creepy dude. Or I don't know. Hey, we, we, we over at, uh, with wrestling with Wookie and at the, at the <laughs> no gimmicks network, we think it's absolutely hilarious. We think it's I the funniest really thing we've ever seen because it's just. You guys obviously have good chemistry together to the point where she can look disgusted and you can look creepy, and it's hilarious. I don't know if I'm maybe the weird person for thinking it's funny, knowing it's not real, you know what I mean? Knowing it's it's all part of a storyline. So Yeah, so fun to play with. So she she me, plays along with it. Right, and she absolutely does a great job. She's a great ring announcer. I'm surprised she hasn't been scooped up by somebody else because... Let me tell you, she can make the smallest match in the card feel like it's the main event at every time. Exactly. She's amazing. And I don't tell her at all what I'm going to do to her. Um, that is all 100% natural that you see of her, her reactions and everything. I don't tell her. She knows I'm going to mess with her, but she has no idea what I'm actually going to do. That's great. So all, all the reactions you see are her really like, what the hell are you doing? It's just, so. it's a breath of fresh air watching Lucha, knowing that some of this stuff, now especially knowing that, hey, this is kind of stuff that happens on the fly. It just, we just, yeah. we ran with it. So talk about a little bit about the vignettes. How are those shot? You know, your little in-between segments that you have there. Straight up like in Hollywood. I freaking love it. Um, I just did an Adam Sandler movie that's coming out in April, That also on Netflix. Um, we shot it exactly like that. There's multiple cameras. Um, we'll get the wide shots, work your way in, get your blocking. Um, you have your lines, and they're very specific on lines. Skip Tyson is the guy who does it. Um, he's an award winner, uh, film producer in Hollywood. Um, and it's filmed just like you would see the Avengers shot or House of the Days of Our Lives or anything. It's a, it's a movie. That's fantastic. That's yeah. super fun. It's great. It looks great. It comes off great um, on TV. And it's fun, though. They give me some... Yeah, they give us some freedom, though. So, they so say, you're, you're even in the, the vignettes script. allowed to kind of, and... like, stretch your legs a little bit. Exactly. And I don't know if it's just with me or with if, if it's they do it with all the characters, but they've given me some freedom. So, like, I did throw out suggestions. Like, can I do this? And this, like, yeah, try it and see what happens. And then if they like it, we keep it. So, um, actually, the vignette setting up the Weapons of Mass Destruction match was most of all of it was me and Dario Cueto just making stuff up, but using the same lines that they give you. So, um, they give us a lot of creative freedom for that. And, and in fact, that match, the Weapons of Mass Destruction match, wasn't even going to originally happen. So, um, they write down the story. But they also listen, which is why I love Lucha Underground is where they actually hear our suggestions. And so that's I'm very lucky in that aspect where I got to create some of the way these vignettes go. And that Weapons of Mass Destruction match 
um, wouldn't have happened if they weren't listening. Yeah, that was a, that was probably the guys. I want you guys. If you're watching this on the replay, if you're watching it live now, stick around. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up here fairly shortly. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, but if you're watching it on the replay, guys, make sure pause this video, open a new browser, go look for uh, Marty the Moth versus Killshot WMD. Find it in, in your YouTube machine. I'm sure it's out there. Uh, go watch oh, it. it. It's it's fantastic. It's it's the match that made me fall in love with with this. So let me talk. Let me before we get out of Lucha. I don't want to. Get, I don't want to stray too far. So with Lucha and the success you've obviously had over there, is WWE knocking at your door? Obviously, they um, know who you are. They know who I am. I had a child in 2014. Um, they real William Regal even said, "Oh, we know who you are." I'm like, "Great, why am I here?" Um, so uh, they haven't. I haven't heard any contact from them. Um, I've heard from some of several of my friends who work there that. Um, I have eyes on me, but I have not heard or received anything in this method. So, so who makes that phone call to you that says, Hey, we want to bring you in for a tryout. Um, that one was, it's usually the talent relations guy. So my first one in 2007 was at FSW. That was Ty Bailey who was doing that. And then, um, and then it turned into Laronitis. So Laronitis was the guy doing it. And we all know John Laronitis. He had a bunch of TV time. Yes. Um, and now there's a guy named Canyon Seaman who would go and make those phone calls. And I believe that's the one who contacted me last. Um, um, it's either him or one of his assistants saying, hey, would you be available for this, this, and this? I'm, sure. Um, they have an amazing performance center, by the way. Yeah. 100% props on that performance center. And it is exactly what you see in the video game because I've seen some clips of the video game, and it is exactly like that. So. Really? That's Absolutely. interesting to know. Luke, I believe Killshot went over in that match, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, oh. I believe, yeah, Killshot won the Weapons of Mass Destruction match, correct? Sure did. Okay, that's what I thought, yeah. I'm like, it's been a while, but let me uh, go access my brain archive, I guess. So nothing really has come come from them. That's that. I mean, for me, that's shocking to me. Uh, since you said since 2014, correct? 2014 was uh, my WWE trial before Lucha Underground really started. Um, and then I really haven't heard much. Is it because, <laughs> I don't know, you don't have to reveal it, because of your maybe contractual obligations with Lucha? Um, do you think that maybe. might have something to do with it? I doubt it because I heard rumor-wise, I haven't asked. I heard they were going after Angelico and a few of the other guys from Mexico. Mm-hmm. I haven't asked Angelico or them if it was true or not, but you know everything on the internet's true. Absolutely, yeah. and Dave Meltzer's always correct. Remember that kid. Always Dave correct. Meltzer knows everything. He's got a red phone that leads right to Vince McMahon. So <laughs> that's that's my little running joke: is Dave Meltzer knows everything, and then you know at the last minute it'll always be like, "Well, I was wrong," so they clearly changed their mind. But uh, talk to me a little bit about Prince Puma, a.k.a. King Ricochet. How was that to work with him? So smooth. Um, I honestly think he's one of the best of our time right now um, in the world. Um, He's just so smooth. He has so many ideas. He has so much experience. Um, And, yeah, it just makes it easy. One thing that I always – I love is – how people seeing how people are in the ring versus when they're actually in the ring with me and with him, you watch him. It's like, it's like watching a video game, but smoother. Like he just kind of flies around and it looks like there's no effort put in whatsoever. He just kind of does seven backflips just because why not? Let's just throw that in there and do a kick. Like he does amazing stuff and he's just so fluid and, and he's just like that in the ring as well so easy to work with so that guy is honestly i think one of if not the best uh that we have in the world right now now i don't know how close you are to uh, ricochet at all but the rumor mill floating out there and especially with some of his tweets and you do if you don't want to tell me you don't have to but the rumor mill says right now and all the dirt sheets say that he is headed to nxt is there any truth behind that there could be everything on the internet is true again well you um, know Right. <laughs> so, uh, 
<laughs> That's why I'm asking somebody who maybe has a little bit of the in with him. I don't know how, like I said, I don't know how close you guys are, but um, I mean, you do work together to a degree. I know he's he's done after this this season's over, correct? Or is, I don't know. That, how... That's the thing. He he hasn't said one way or the other. Um, I know um, that he has been in. That there's been people talking to him, but um, that's a decision that's up to him to make. So. Um, we will see to be continued right. on how that out. Sounds great. Okay, so I gotta ask you. I don't. I have. I've been searching for it. I don't see any trips to Japan for you. Have you I ever have been there for been, New Japan? I have never been in New, to Japan. Um, I'd very much like to be, um, but I have no idea who I would even talk to to even get to Japan. I've done all my wrestling. I uh, hear Germany, Mexico, but I've never gone further than uh, to Japan. So, anybody else like uh, Ring of Honor? Maybe like ever ever contacting you to maybe float their way after you're done with uh, Lucha Underground? I know they have a very tight knit group with New Japan. Um, I keep in touch with a few Ring of Honor guys actually. Um, so, uh, yeah, they know exactly who I am. Um, we've talked, um, but I, I enjoy where I'm at now. I have contractual obligations where I'm at now. Right. And, and honestly, I like the aspect of Lucha Underground where I can act as well as wrestle because I love the live crowd of things, but I love doing movies. Like this Adam Sandler movie was something I very thoroughly much enjoyed. Which can um, you tell me which movie that is coming out? It's actually the next one coming out. It's Sandy Wexler. Okay, so watch out for that on Netflix, guys, and go see it. I know That's everyone right. in the chat has Netflix. We all, everyone, like and Netflix has just become like the energy bill. We all have it. We so, all have it. Yeah, right. I just wish my energy bill was six bucks. Or <laughs> right. Every month. Yeah, here you go. I'd have no problem paying that. I got a six bedroom house and I only need one room. So I rent out the other rooms. So five or seven adults in one house. I got a lot of people going with a lot of energy bills sure. going on. So I got to ask this too, because the last time I recall seeing you on Lucha Underground, you were tied up in some big old thick ropes and uh, your your storyline sister Mary Posa slapped the shit out of you, and then walked away with you cackling madly. <laughs> What's the deal with that? <laughs> Just little sibling love. Haven't you ever beat the shit out of your siblings? I have. I used to choke slam my brother on my mom and dad's bed <laughs> all the <laughs> time. Choke slam, rock bottom, stunners, you name it. That's all that was, oh, yeah. just a little sibling love, or is this is this alluding to something that's going to be happening with your character more here in the future? That is something you'll have to stay tuned and find out. Well, but I'm I will stay tuned something. anyways. Um, but there's so many stuff that I didn't even know about until I started. Uh, I heard one of Krista Joseph's uh, on one of the podcasts. Um, everything that is in the Lucha Underground Arena has some sort of symbolism to some storyline, um, like the weights are brand new weights, but they look like they're a hundred years old. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's graffiti on the wall that has some sort of symbolism. The, the, the tray, the poster for season three. Um, if you look at it, um, it has all sorts of hidden like names and stuff that weren't announced at that time. They do a lot of stuff with art and stuff like that, where they just kind of throw stuff in there. Um, that will mean something in the later future. Just, just to see when people watch it again, hey, that's from this or this or this storyline. So there's legit um, little Easter eggs in everything we see, and we're just exactly. most of us are just oblivious to it. Because I before you yeah, told I, me that, I was completely oblivious to that. Before I watched uh, did jo, did jo, one of the Joseph podcasts, I was oblivious to it, and I'm on set. <laughs> that's so, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's... They didn't tell us any of that. But you look on the poster for season three, and then you'll see like Dial of Doom mm -hmm. and like Pentagon Junior, all this sorts of stuff and words that are thrown in there and written that you have. If you haven't watched season three yet, you have no idea what that is. Um, Rabbit Tribe, all this sort of stuff. There's a bunch of little hidden gems and Easter eggs in there. Pretty much every episode. That's why the creativeness of these writers are off the charts. That's craziness. So you just mentioned. Um... 
the rabbits. How how is Paul London doing these days? He looks good. I love that man. <laughs> Straight up love that man. Um, he yeah no he is uh, hilarious. He's he's happy. He's, um, he's one of the actual agents there as well, I believe. Um, I don't know if I can say that or not, but I did. So yeah, he's one of the agents there. It's okay. Uh, We're uh, a real small <laughs> channel. Nobody's watching. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. You've got some people on the chat right now. There's people in the chat. They're all just wishing me a happy birthday. Yes, I'm turning 30 tomorrow, and my wife decided to embarrass me and put my balloons in the background. It's what all she does. Right. That's what wives do. We Love you, too. All... Well, I want to know what you're getting for your birthday. That's what I'd like to know. I told you what I'm doing for my birthday. I'm locking myself in my bedroom and watching Netflix all day. <laughs> At least I'm trying. <laughs> She always asks me, what do you want for your birthday? I'm like, to be left alone. Like, that's it. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Once you have kids, you're like, I'd like three hours of just quiet. That's it. Weird how that works. So let's get back into this. Sorry, we took like a total derailment of where I was headed with this. Totally forgot what I was talking about. So you've been in some other movies too here. Uh, I see you were in a Vampire in 2012. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And now explain this movie. I tried to find a little bit about this movie. Couldn't really find much on it. Um, nope. And that could just be my limited time uh, looking for it because I'm like, what is this movie? Explain Vampire and uh, ex how that experience was with the whole acting. Um, I love you. Probably wouldn't find one bag like that. That's more of a not an indie film, but a bigger production in Utah film. Um, that I don't have no idea what he actually did with it. Okay. We watched it in the movie theater, so it was cool to see my face on the big screen. Um, but that was it. So you probably wouldn't see that, but I did, did things like uh, Everwood was a show. That was yep. my very first thing I did. I was going to ask you about Everwood, and I was going to ask you about Barter Kings. And Barter Kings, yeah, that was a fun one. Um, so that was on A&E, um, so a little bit more than Vampire. Vampire was actually just a show or um, the kid, I, I saw that one time, <laughs> I'm trying to remember it on um, the kid turned into a vampire. I was, the, I'm always the bad guy in everything I play. Um, even in barter Kings, they're like, Hey, we want you to be an asshole. You're a wrestler. So do that. I'm like, all right. Um, so I'm a bad guy. I'm pretty much Biff Tanner from back to the future. If nice. you don't know the reference, you need to go see back to the future. You need to go um, find Jesus and watch need, back to the future. You need to go find yeah. Jesus or go back in time and do it yourself. Um, back to the future. Uh, yeah, basically I was a, I was a bad guy. I was a bully. Um, I, I picked on him and then, um, he turned into a vampire and I got my comeuppance and I screamed like a girl to the best that I could. Um, but I had, I don't know, my voice got deeper between now and vampire cause I've been trying to do it in some of the matches and I can't do it anymore. <clears throat> oh, did we lose him again? Uh, I'm still here. I was like, oh, did we lose you? You went faint there for a second. So here's yeah. the time I want to take all the Twitter questions and kind of uh, get them floated out there. Guys in the chat, this is your time to get your questions in. We're not going to go for long. Uh, if you guys have questions, get them out now or forever hold your peace because I'm not going to sit here and wait for you guys like you normally do when we do Q&As and you guys take forever to type, type, type. Get your question in now while I'm going through the Twitter questions. So question number one comes from at Zeus King uh, underscore dark. He wants to know, is Mothra in the Moth tribe? <laughs> um, Mothra and me have been chatting and there's tryouts coming soon. So we'll be, we'll, we'll soon to find out Let's see if you can get put through the test and succeed. All righty. Again, from the same Twitter handle, uh, did you like being a part of Team M at Triple Mania last year with Mil Muertes and Matanza? Uh, Mil Muertes, Marty the Moth, and Matanza. I get it. I like it. Um, Team M. I, <laughs> three M's, M&M's, and M. I don't know how that works. You, you, um, should, probably, yeah, you should put that into creative, the Triple M. It's a new stable in, in Lucha mm -hmm. Underground. What's your name? Mm. Yeah, mm -mm. that's it. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, I that that was actually my first time wrestling in Mexico. I've gone to Mexico and just partied. 
Um, that was my first time wrestling. Mexico was at Triple A, which is if you don't know what Triple A is, is the WWE of Mexico, and Triple Mania is the equivalent to their WrestleMania. So my first time going down to Triple A or to, or to Mexico to wrestle and Triple A was in their biggest show of the year in Mexico City in front of twenty thousand people against Rey Mysterio. So it was a blast. Um, and uh, anytime I get the chance to wrestle with Ray, it's always fun. All right. How is that working with Ray? I, I got to know. I'm a, I'm a big Ray guy. I, he was one, I was a big WCW guy, like we were talking about earlier, and he was one of those that was like you always remembered his matches. Right. Um, and so the, I remember the very first time Aztec Warfare won in Lucha Underground, um, they said, okay, you're going to come in. You're going to go right after Rey Mysterio. I'm like, oh, awesome. Um, and then, so I did. So, um, no, and I was kicking the midget in the face. I love you, Jeff. <laughs> <by the way. laughs> That's great. Kicking so the midget kicking in the face. Midget. Yeah, I'm kicking Mascarita Sagrada. He's a midget. I love the guy, but he's a midget and he's great. And uh, he adds a lot to the show. Oh, I um, thought I you were calling Rey Mysterio a midget. Oh, well, he's short too, but yeah. I didn't call him. Especially three weeks before I wrestle him again. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, but I was kicking, uh, so I'm kicking a midget in the in the corner, and yay, yay, yay! So that's just goofy. And then I feel this tap on my shoulder, and I turn around, and it's Rey Mysterio. And uh, I, I, you might have actually see if you see it and look close at it, you might actually catch me because I think I initially go in for a hug. Just he's Rey Mysterio. I watched him three years, and I don't know, I don't know if that. I don't remember if that was part of the spot or what, but I think I went and tried to hug him for some reason. Did just uh, everything take over you, and you're like, oh, it's Rey Mysterio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It was like, oh, Ray. And I don't know. You'll actually see it. Because I, I, I didn't know I did that until I went back and watched it. <laughs> so, nice. um, But, yeah, he's, he's, he, it's awesome wrestling Ray every single time. Luke in the chat wants to know, do you know where he can watch Lucha Underground in the UK? In the UK? Um, I don't know what internet is like out there. I don't know you got what sites you have access to. I have actually been, I can't, I probably shouldn't say this, but um, I am not home, so I watch mine on the internet, and it's not on Netflix here for me yet. Uh, so I actually go and... I just type in Lucha Underground stream, and then usually one of the first three sites that pops and up. And then my it. face pops up, because that's exactly yep. what we Well, it's not exactly what we do here, but it's kind of what we do. We're, we're <laughs> watching. We're watching. I, I do a kind of like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday thing, and we're watching the show kind of as a group and talking about it as we go along. So that's kind of how I, I run Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday around here. It's just there's so much to watch and so little time, so I figured, hey... Why not make a show about it? We can all talk about it together, and it'll be great. It'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Zeus again asks, uh, wants to know what food or drinks. Okay, he's uh, a little bit broken English here, but uh, what food and drinks do you enjoy to give you energy during your busy day? Um, it used to be a crazy amount of energy drinks. If you go to a wrestling locker room, I've ever been in one. Um, these guys drink a crazy, insane amount of energy drinks. Um, in fact, it got to the point where uh, one energy drink was great. I was solid for the day. Then it got to two. Then it got to four. Then it got to six. Then it was six and a pre-workout so that I could get through my desk job that I had at that time. Um, so it screws with your adrenals. Um, I actually opened up a supplement company for that very reason um, so that I could be healthier and not die. And where can um, we find those supplements at? Um, go to liveyoungalways.com, check out my supplements there, or go to martincasals.com. I'll make sure to get some shipped out to you, um, or any one of my social media sites and just hit me up. Yeah, I'm I do. on your site. I see your store. I don't know. I'm going to have to float and dig around in there for a little bit. I signed up. I did. I signed up. I promise. Awesome. So awesome. hopefully I get an email, uh, and that, yes, that tells me where to absolutely. find all this stuff. So yeah. Hit me up on any of my social media sites. I'd love to figure out what your needs really are and uh, send some stuff out to you. Again, I'm still working on martincasals.com, but I'm giving away free shit. So yeah. if you like party merch, put yourself on there. I'm about to do a Facebook and Instagram run to 10,000. I have about 
1,000 left on Instagram and 2,000 left on Facebook um, before I hit 10. So I'm thinking I'm giving away free stuff until that happens. So Fantastic. you want to be there. I'm going to follow you right now. I got to find you, but I will find you. I didn't know you had an Instagram. Yep, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Martin Casals. So nice to keep it simple. Keep it simple. There you are. That was very simple and very easy. All right. I'm guessing this is a question with no question mark at the end, and I think I already know <laughs> the answer. But uh, GTA Money wants to know, is Marty the Moth and Mary Posa, uh, are they still family because Marty choked Mary Posa? Uh, what did he say? Family because a few weeks on Lucha Underground, Marty choke slammed Mary Posa. I did, and I choke slammed the shit out of my sister. <laughs> <laughs> no lie. It was fun. Um, but uh, choke slamming someone doesn't change your blood. So, yes, we are still family. Is she mad at me? Probably. She tied me up and smacked me. But we'll see if that uh, brings any other fun from the Moth Tribe, because we are not exactly your wholesome family Brady Bunch. No, and that makes it great. Um, <laughs> real, I gotta ask you real quick because it's something that just popped into my head. Um, how close were you and Chavo Classic? Um, I had met him multiple times at Lucha, and I spent about two good nights uh, with him where we just were done shooting, and then he just tells stories and interact and just hanging out with him. Um, so I wouldn't say I was super close, but I was more than just a casual or whatever. It's I, I did spend some time with him there, um, so um, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. I I can, I totally agree, or I totally agree. I can totally uh, relate. My mother actually just passed away this past March, so it's like, oh, I can totally relate. It just it's one of those things that just is awful, and uh, yeah, you don't wish on your worst awful. enemy. Exactly. I would not want to wish that to anybody. It's hard. Again, I I only. I hung out with them a couple of times. It wasn't like Ray Mysterio and <laughs> Chavo, who's known way better than I do. Um, but he was the nicest guy ever. He had so much knowledge in him. And uh, I, he knew who I was because we were there all the time. And he treated me just as good as he did everybody else. So just a good guy. And uh, we lost another good one. Yeah. That's, they, uh... It's a shame. Uh, somebody passing is never a good thing. So it, it kind of sucks, but is what it is. So I got to ask. Here we are. We're coming towards the end. We've gone through the past. We've, we've been through the present. What does the future hold for, for Martin Casaus? Am I, am I pronouncing um, that right? The future. I'm pronouncing that correct, right? Casaus? Yeah, right. I'm sorry. Actually, you are. I was gonna. I was already prepared to give you shit because ninety nine. I did my research. You are one of the one percenters who got it right. I because I saw you are one of the one percenters who got it right. I'm like, I'm gonna have trouble with that name. I know I'm going to. Um, so I'm gonna do search for different ways to say. Oh, am I breaking up? Oh, is that better? Yeah, I I missed all that. Yeah, I can hear it, and then then I can't. So I I said you were one of the one percenters who got it right, and then I had no idea what you said after that. Oh, no, I I did my research on the whole ordeal, and uh, I found about four to five different ways to say it. Yeah, just picked up randomly. Oh, that's crazy. All right. Well, you know, tell you what. Oh. But, yeah, you said it right, so props to you. It's now. All right. Oh, you said it better. Triple A, Triple A fucked it up. Triple H so, fucked it up. You uh, go back and watch uh, the last match. I did a worm with uh, Johnny Mundo. That gif went out. But I'm in Mexico. My name half Mexican. Uh, Triple A, Triple A fucked it up. The company that I'm wrestling for <laughs> coming down. I'm wrestling. They announced me, and then uh, it's a Mexican name. I'm half Mexican in real life. Actually from Mexico, I'm in Mexico wrestling for a Mexican television show, and they say Martin Cashew. It doesn't I, even look like Cashew. I used Where to you say Cashew out of Casas. I used to Come say out. Casas, and I'm like, nah. And I, I did some research. I made sure I knew. I didn't want to fuck up a name. Having a name like mine sucks. So you know, it is what it is. I, I have a real bad last name as well. So. Real quick, tell me what the future is, because it looks like I don't know what's going on yeah. with my internet. 
My internet's randomly going in and out right now. Can you still hear yeah, me? Yeah, you're underwater right now, so but yeah, I can hear you still. That's crazy. Well, well, real quick, tell everybody what is what does the future hold can for for you? What is that? What happened? What? There you are. Yeah. Yeah. What does the future hold for you, for you right now? What do, What are your plans um, for 2017 and so beyond? I plan on bringing gold to the market. Um, 2017, I want to be in at least one more movie in 2017. Um, I want to be, uh, at least, uh, several more episodes per season. I might actually, actually just want to get Blue John Gun Gold this year. I think that's what I want to do, but that might've got pushed back because we got pushed back. I want to be in at least one more, um, SAG movie. I want to make at least, I'm going for an extra 50 grand in my, uh, business this year. Um, I want to open up two more income streams because I want to get a total uh, income stream for every bill that I have. Um, and then I would like to wrestle um, in a country that I haven't, either that be UK or Japan. So I got those goals that I have for me, and I have a goal of being a millionaire before 35. So that's kind of my blocking points. All right. That is fantastic. Guys, it looks like the stream and everything is just going at the moment. So... I'm going to kill it here. Marty, thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Um, it's great having you on. And uh, we can get a little bit here off stream so that maybe you can actually hear me. So you guys have a fantastic <laughs> night in the stream. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully I have a box to open for you. And tomorrow, if not, we'll do some super card. If not, champions. We'll figure it out then. Follow me on Twitter to make sure you guys know and get to vote on what video we put up tomorrow. Until then, have a good one, guys.